All right, change of plans. I was gonna work on my motorhome, but Doug Sewell with Sewell Motor Coach just called me and gave me an opportunity that I have a difficult time passing up. He just purchased a 2019 Berkshire from Beaver Coach Sales in Bend, Oregon. And then he asked if I wouldn't mind uh, doing an inspection for it and driving it to him. Now I told him I did not have time to drive it all the way to Kentucky. So he said, okay, drive it to your shop and then do an inspection on it. Now transporting RVs is not something I, I actually offer as a normal service, but Doug did want me to do an inspection on it to make sure that it's a good unit and he's not gonna get stuck with a, a lemon, I guess you, you would call it. And so it was very difficult for me to say no to that because I did want to go to Bend, Oregon and I did want to go to Beaver Coach Sales because Beaver Coach Sales in Bend, Oregon is where this was built. If I come around here, we see our Beaver logo and I look at uh, Beaver Motor Coaches, it's in Bend, Oregon. So I want to go visit the birthplace of my 2001 Beaver Patriot Thunder and I need to get up there before it gets too cold for a desert rat like myself. And I only have a very small window of time to get that coach for Doug and drive it back here before I have another job to do. So I already have the airplane ticket purchased. I just need to go ahead, go home, load up, and then fly up there. Let me get up to Oregon. I'll pick up the unit, and then we'll drive it back, and then we'll talk about it. Well, it's definitely a little bit cooler here than Arizona. Well, it's a little bit colder here in Bend, Oregon, but you know what's behind me? Beaver Coach Cells. But also, this was the original headquarters of Beaver Motor Coach. The manufacturer of the best motorhome ever built, my motorhome. Okay, so here's the plan. I'm gonna go cross the street, meet up with the uh, team there at Beaver Coach Cells. I'm gonna inspect this coach for Doug and make sure that it's up to snuff. I'm sure it's gonna be fine. And if everything goes okay, I have to drop off this rental car and then I'm gonna drive that coach back to my shop and do a complete inspection on it. Now, personally, I hope it goes well because I've never driven an RV through Oregon and it's a beautiful time of year in fall. And the leaves are just changing right now. But even coming through the McKenzie uh, Pass, I guess that's what they're calling Highway 20, I did get a little bit of snow at the very top of it. And so it's probably the perfect time to drive before the snow hits. Now I can tell you, it looks like they have a lot of nice stuff here at Beaver Coach Sales. It's enough creeping and looking around at their dealership. I need to uh, find somebody to talk to. Though Beaver Coach Sales now is a dealer for Newmar, Tiffin, Thor Motorhomes, including other high quality used RVs of all types, including a robust rental operation, all backed and supported by a complete RV service and parts department. The roots of the dealership are decades old, built around the Beaver Motorhome factory in Bend, Oregon. While the last of the Beaver Motorhomes were built in 2009, the legacy of Beaver Motor Coach persists in the many original Beaver employees and the obvious and subtle nods of that history can be found everywhere in the showroom including a scale model of a Monaco era Beaver Santium. Now under the leadership of the owners, Ty and Jody Kelly, the dealership has thrived to the point that Beaver Coach Sales acquired the manufacturing and trademark rights for Beaver Motorhomes from Rev Group in 2016, with the hope to one day revive Beaver Motor Coach manufacturing in Bend, Oregon, and I, which I support and look forward to. I'm doing a detour through Arizona. Okay. I don't have time to go to Kentucky right now. There's not much you guys can do, but wish me luck anyways. All right, let's do this inspection. Well, I kind of thought this was it when I was walking in, but let me take a look at it real fast and then uh, got to make my way back to Arizona, I think. Provided that it's in uh, good condition. And yes, I will be looking at the roof. It looks good. Including the entry door awning. Still does not work with the engine running, neither do the jacks. The jacks underneath. Using the equalizer system. Now overall, this is a really nice coach and I can't wait to show it to you guys. I did find two serious, or kind of serious issues that I'll discuss with you. I already told Doug about it. All right, so we manually leveled there. Go ahead and retract. 
Now I did have to wedge the keys right there because the engine is not charging the house batteries. And if you notice on the windshield it says the unit's been winterized and the unit has been winterized. It's because it's cold. The only other major issue I've seen right now is uh, inverter is not charging. We're getting an AC overload. Um, house batteries are actually pretty new. Only I think maybe a year old. But the uh, 110 pass through is working. I think uh, maybe the inverter is bad. But I did already talk to Doug about it and he's okay with it. But I think we're going to go ahead and send it, guys. So I'm going to get this thing loaded up and headed back down the road. But it does seem to be a pretty nice Berkshire. Or is it Berkshire? Which one is it? I never know. Wish me luck, and I think I'm going to see you guys in Arizona, back at the shop. All right. There we go. We're pulling into the shop right now. Uh, this is a, it was a pretty good trip. Everything went really well. Thing drove really, really well. Pulled the hills without a problem. I was passing a lot of people, even in uh, two-lane highways with the passing zone. But let me get this pulled into the shop. Now, Doug didn't ask me to make a video about this. Uh, I, he just wanted to make sure that he wasn't getting a lemon. And uh, I really want to make a video about this. I did not expect uh, to like this coach so much. I did stay in it for two days, and I did live in it, and I did use it. And I was very impressed by the entire thing. So I don't know exactly what I was expecting, but I was very pleasantly surprised by the, the build quality, but more importantly, the floor plan. That's not to say Forest River makes a bad product. I was just not expecting it to be this good. And I was so impressed by it that I want to take you guys through a complete and total walkthrough. Uh, Doug asked me to do an inspection on it, so I'm going to do that inspection first. And then once I'm done with my inspection, I will take you guys on a complete walkthrough, starting at the roof, we'll go on the outside, and I'm going to take you through the inside, because the inside of this thing even though the outside's beautiful and it's well thought out, the inside is where this coach really excels. I've really never been as surprised and impressed by the manufacturer and this coach as I have been with this 2019 Berkshire from Forest River. Excelled at everything I wanted it to do. And uh, I can't wait to share it with you guys because it really might have changed my opinion about uh, Forest River and Forest River diesel pushers. But that was a very fun and impromptu trip from Arizona all the way up to Oregon through uh, Oregon's desert, I didn't realize Oregon had such a big desert, and then through the Great Basin area of no uh, northern Nevada. I found a lot of uh, hidden treasures that I didn't know about there, but it was also fun to get up the beaver coach sales there in Bend, Oregon, to find the birthplace of my 2001 Beaver Patriot Thunder. I wish I had a lot more time to explore there, the uh, surrounding area where the factory used to be, and talk to all the employees there, but everybody there was incredibly nice, and I think I'll probably be back there at some point. So let me get this inspection over with and we'll skip to the good part. But thanks a lot for watching guys. Keep an eye out. I should have a video up about uh, the entire walkthrough on this coming out shortly too. Thanks a lot. So the uh, east side of uh, Oregon is just a desert. There's nothing there, including gas stations with death. And I can't go very far without diesel exhaust fluid because they didn't give me enough when I picked it up. But these are known as the Oregon Badlands, which is kind of insulting because it just looks like Arizona to me. There you go, guys. This is what Eastern Oregon looks like. About as far as you can see. If it weren't for a few trucks and a few RVs coming down the opposite way, I honestly would be a little concerned that I shouldn't have gone this way. But obviously, they're coming from somewhere, unless they turned around. Also, I think I need a haircut.